Hello everyone, Elrond here with part 51 of my NGN Dark Souls run. So now we're going to make our way over to Nido. Um, after picking up this last week in Warrior. And this actually is the first time that I'll be fighting Nido solo. I think I've always fought him with someone running resistance before, so it doesn't go as smoothly as I expected it to go, but um, we still get the win without dying, so um, at least there's that. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is drink up, because that fall is going to make you take a lot of damage. So I'm trying to skip the, the little guys and lock on to Nito himself, and then I got grabbed in the process. Um, but yeah, generally Nito will kill the little stuff for you, um, and certainly the person running resistance would as well. Um, you gotta watch out for that Nova. That Nova, as you can see, kills off a bunch of uh, trash mobs, but trash mobs continually spawn because this guy's basically made out of a billion skeletons and whenever he does that lunge strike it seems like more of them spawn. So the trick is staying out of Nova range and um, not getting hit by these various guys. Um, I'm not 100% sure if the shield is going to make a difference or not. Um, And then we've got skeletal giants on this side as well. So you probably don't want to tumble onto this side of him. You probably want to stay on this side because this side tends to have the weaker guys. Um, and yeah, luckily Nito doesn't really seem to care about his own troops. Um, he'll just indiscriminately swipe and um, do his novas and whatnot. And since the giants migrated to my side, I might as well switch over to the other side because it can't be any worse. Um, well, it looks like there was still a giant here, but um, still, one was better than two. And so, yeah, usually it's not this bad, but usually I had someone running resistance um, as well. So this ended up being a more challenging fight than I was anticipating, but still very much doable. Um, you might want to utilize your Rite of Kindling and get uh, 20 flasks instead of um, going with um, the standard 5 or whatever remainder you had from when you were at Firelink. Um, and so I basically did a circle around the entire place because I was under the impression that there was an item that um, was hiding. And uh, after failing to see it the first time, um, it really wasn't worth um, trying to pursue it further because it was just like a paladin set or something weird like that. Um, but now I'm going to um, kindle this bonfire up to 20. So this means now that uh, whenever I use this bonfire, I will get 20 flasks instead of 10. And if you use 3 humanity on a um, non-firekeeper um, bonfire, then you can also get it to 20 as well. The firekeeper... Um, basically acts as a kindling to offset the fact that the firekeeper needs to be alive to use the uh, bonfire. So now let's uh, get our humanities back, uh, just cause. And so at this point I am going to go back to the undead asylum so we can get ourselves another titanite slab. Um, this will be the 
second of the three um, guaranteed slabs that you get in a playthrough. Um, in the next cohort, I will at some point uh, pick, uh, try to pick up the uh, the one in the DLC land. That one will uh, complete the series of um, slabs that are not, you know, super rare um, drops off of trash mobs. And so what we're going to do is we are going to climb this big tower and um, curl up like a ball inside the crow's nest. Um, first I'm going to go pick up that key because that'll eventually lead to a ring. Um, but um, in any case... Um, we'll be going back to the asylum, um, I was looking for a better way to get back, but it didn't really work out, so I'm going to just uh, fast forward back to where we were, and so now we're going to climb these stairs, loop around, climb these stairs, and then curl up like a ball inside the nest. And I'll admit, when I first heard that we were supposed to do this, it was kind of unnerving. Um, but, you know, given the various other atrocities that you kind of need to do, like the uh, Crystal Caves, which we haven't done yet in this run, um, this seems like a cakewalk in comparison. And so I decide I don't want to deal with these guys. Um, they're kind of obnoxious when they have their torches, so I'm just going to snipe them. And so we're going to have to fight a harder version of the first boss we ever fought. Um, I died to him a couple times. Um, the first time I died to him, it was essentially for the same reason as um, my very first death um, to his um, easy counterpart. I essentially was too stubborn to drink the flask and wanted to just finish him off. I drank the flask at least once during that fight, so it wasn't a stubbornness to do it 100% with one bar. Um, and, oh, yeah, I kind of forget that these knights like to bash, then pierce. I'm used to most things with shields only bashing, or only piercing, so I kind of fall for that trick a few times. Um, but anyways, um, so then my second death is me trying to get my corpse. Um, and basically having no sense of heading, um, just being completely lost and, you know, just dying quickly because I'm too worried about figuring out where my corpse is and not worried about surviving. And then the third death, I think, was just um, very unfortunate timing. And I forgot that that ball resets when you come back here, so um, we totally did not get fooled by that um, when we were in the tutorial phase, but I certainly got fooled by it this time because I wasn't expecting it. Um, so watch out for when the balls drop. Um, so over here is the uh, path to that uh, spot where we are going to use the key, and that's going to give us some ring that lets us wade through difficult terrain more easily. That'll be it for this video. I'll see you next video. Good luck, have fun.